Well, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for uh, coming together to help celebrate Ajahn Brahm's Big 7 0. Um, what a wonderful occasion we have found ourselves uh, with to be able to celebrate together through technology or if you happen to be in Perth, uh, close, closer to the Sangha, um, this wonderful occasion of Ajahn Brahm's uh, 70th year. And it truly is uh, a great opportunity for all of us to um, to share our goodwill um, and our gratitude towards a remarkable teacher, a remarkable preceptor uh, that has shown us the way, um, a way that's a little less common but certainly more and more appreciated. So. Let me just introduce uh, this location that I'm in because I'm in uh, a pretty fantastic place. I am lucky enough to have been um, uh, given the opportunity to travel last year before the pandemic hit and uh, I had made uh, a choice to come to Sri Lanka to search out locations that um, I've I feel may be suitable uh, to to continue my meditation, my practice, and well, I've found one very, very good place, and I've actually found many or several, but this place is uh, is as pretty good as it gets. Um, I'm in a place called Kurumbiga Forest Monastery or Aranyavihara. It's in. Uh, it's in the wilds of Yala National Park down the southeast corner of Sri Lanka, a truly uh, quite remote place. Um, it's very sparsely populated outside of the national park. And we are surrounded by incredible landscape of granite. These massive granite formations that are all around me and, uh, and, and in which we live in caves, um, or Lenna, we call it, as they're called in Sri Lankan. And uh, I'm in, uh, in amongst the, the granite and the jungle and uh, the wild animals and um, I found a very conducive place to practice um, in solitude, mostly, um, in isolation, mostly. Uh, very fortunate here, you know, there are things to do, there are some duties, but, but, but much less than, than uh, other monasteries that are, that are being built or, or continuing, continually, continuing to expand, um, which creates a lot of busyness, so good to be away from all that busyness and good to be here in this very, it's actually a very hot part of, of the world. Um, it's the lowlands, very close to the ocean, a couple of kilometres just over there, and a couple more kilometres that way is Bodhinyana, uh, Serpentine, so uh, many blessings to you all at Bodhinyana and Damasada and, and all throughout Perth. Uh, it's a, it's a quite remarkable that uh, when sitting up on Balungala behind me, uh, this amazing rock formation and uh, stupa up the top, that you're, you're facing straight towards Bodhinyana, which is really incredible. And uh, but in, in amongst this uh, landscape is um, is is an absolute plethora of archaeological ruins of um, dharma sites of ancient monasteries of ancient. Um, Aranya Viharas that were nestled in the jungle and this landscape has changed a lot over the last 2,000 years from being uh, 
cultivated to returning back to jungle and so forth and uh, and 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 of course the the sangha coming and going now we are down to this place um, down the road there uh, in between uh, me and Bodhinyana is on the coast is Akanda which is a, a Hindu temple um, a very well established place uh, when there's no COVID it gets um, huge amount of uh, disciples visiting um, and we have uh, there, there are other monasteries uh, around the periphery of Yala National Park but this is the only one in it except for the other side over towards Kataragama which is a, a very sacred uh, place a Hindu place site um, and there is a, 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 another forest monastery there in the National Park called Situpawal and uh, and, uh, but apart from that, many of them are back to the jungle. Um, but of course, the caves don't go away in a hurry. Um, and they've been etched by, by the previous um, uh, monks to create uh, habitable caves that don't get wet. So they put a drip line in. Um, and so a lot of these places are, you know, there, there are in, in also inscriptions who, who it was donated by, who the work was done by, and including kings and princes and things like that. So um, it's uh, dating, some dating to 2,200 years ago, which is phenomenal. Um, so this is very, very rich Dharma land. There is uh, an un unspeakable amount of history here including Arahants and, and um, very well established uh, uh, mendicants um, that have come and passed through this land and not just here uh, throughout the whole of Sri Lanka you know there are other regions that are very very well trodden now um, uh, major tourist sites in fact and, 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 and lots of people visiting them um, on pilgrimage or, or just as tourists and uh, these places are all esteemed to have had very highly attained uh, monks in the last 2,300 plus years so a um, remarkable land is Sri Lanka known as the Pearl of the Indian Ocean and uh, for good reason it's uh, shaped a bit like a pearl well kind of a teardrop actually and uh, but it's a, you know there are so many gems uh, in this landscape, such as uh, these ancient locations where we can practice. But also the the uh, society has um, because it's a, a dharma rich society, it's a very generous society in general. Uh, there's lots of generosity, lots of uh, openness and giving and um, charity that is hard to fathom quite frankly you know I've been on uh, some walking tours and traveled a little bit and met strangers and the and the generosity shown is unbelievable um, people want to help people want to serve people want to uh, give and support the Dhamma and the Sangha uh, and and that gives me good hope uh, for the future of this planet because there's countries like this and others and, and you know traditional countries uh, Buddhist countries but also you know um, uh, contemporary countries modern countries that are that are getting the bug the good bug the Dharma bug and uh, they, they are it is really growing so that's a wonderful thing and I wouldn't you know, it's slowly transitioning to a more generous um, egalitarian society, I feel, in general, in the world. There's still a lot of problems. I'm not uh, not dismissing that. Um, there's still a lot of um, uh, agendas that are, that are compromising to health and well-being of, of, of the planet and its inhabitants. So that's still there, but the, the, the positive outcomes of things like the Dharma spreading and other faith traditions and other practice traditions, other spiritual traditions is really phenomenal. Um, so, and I, you know, I'm seeing that uh, through, through 
um, the media through some media through through internet some some internet and uh, and I'm and I'm heartened by that and uh, and and one of the reasons I, I am practicing here in an isolated location is uh, is to be able to really establish more my practice and less of the of the um, concerns of lay life. Still, it's necessary to, to, to understand the conditions that are happening throughout the planet, but I have um, much less need to get concerned about day-to-day -day worries, busyness, etc. And that is, um, for me, a, a really vital key to, to practicing the Dharma and establishing in myself these qualities, um, foremost, I would say, the the, the Brahma Viharis, Viharas, which are the, the divine abodes, the, the abodes of the of the gods, if you like, uh, which uh, which would be, you know, as you can imagine, if you're not familiar with the term, uh, quite heavenly and quite serene and quite peaceful, full of kindness and full of joy and and, and happiness and and willing to share that with all and not just keep it for oneself in an isolated little cave in the middle of a jungle. Um, but even the simple fact of practicing and establishing uh, a stable mind, a peaceful mind, a happy mind, and uh, utilizing um, practices such as meta meditation um, goes a long way, I feel, and uh, it's pretty well proven, I think, through even, uh, anyway, it's it's a known quantity that uh, to be able to um, uh, um, extend our, our, our best wishes in whatever form has a beneficial, beneficial effect and, and I feel that the, the deeper one's uh, intention uh, and meditation is, uh, then the, the deeper this comes to being true and effective. So, so while I'm staying here as much as I can, isolated and, and in, in solitude as much as I can, um, these practices are the ones that I can commit to, um, enabling me to to develop these qualities that that uh, in the end really are the only things that matter you know all the bitterness and the anger and the ill will that is um, still prevalent in our societies are, are not useful uh, it's not survival of the fittest uh, this is certainly uh, a, a, um, a misconception of, of evolution but it's uh, another term that's been used uh, by various people as survival of the fittingest, meaning those that fit in and uh, get along, cooperate, work together, and not just within a family group or a, or a social group or a country group or a national group or a, or a you know or a species group even, but to get on with everyone to get on with the neighbouring countries, to get on with the neighbouring religions and to get on with the neighbouring species that we co-inhabit this beautiful planet with. And speaking of which, I'm in a place where there is no shortage of these things that can, uh, in, in the worst case scenario, cause a lot of damage to oneself. <laughs> and they do to certain people. Uh, that um, that uh, you know the karma is ripe for. Uh, there are certain incidences where people get attacked by leopards, or attacked by elephants, or attacked by bear, or buffalo, or snakes. You know, it happens in this country uh, because, unfortunately, uh, despite the fact it's a very dharma-rich country there is still a, a fair way to go with people that particularly that don't practice Dharma um, a fair way to go in establishing a sound sila and um, or moral uh, conduct or virtuous conduct ethical conduct 
you know, that of not harming others, that of being kind and speaking well and, you know, that of not um, causing problems within society through uh, sexual misconduct or, or, or using intoxicants excessively to the point where um, it really affects our behaviour and, and, uh, and other intoxicants uh, that create all sorts of problems and uh, so so establishing one's sila or, or morality or ethical behaviour is really paramount on this path and and one would find uh, when one practices uh, metta bhavana often how much that really affects uh, one's virtuous conduct because it becomes you know you're reprogramming your conditioned uh, self to become more loving to be more caring um, to be more thoughtful and becomes automatic apparently I'll let you know when it happens but uh, I'm working on it and um, I still have plenty of material to work through which is good you know I'm not there yet um, but but you know, people such as Ajahn Brahm have shown me and many others one of those ways, the possibilities of just just referring to things through this through the lens of kindfulness goes a long way to uh, avoid reacting in an adverse way, to remaining calm and peaceful. So for this, I am. Un unspeakably uh, are grateful to Ajahn Brahm and 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 to the the, the BSWA which which you know enfolds and supports Ajahn Brahm's work uh, work not really work but um, more like a hobby a pretty busy hobby but yeah supports that so so with with that kind that level of in, um, of uh, support. Ajahn Brahm's able to do so much for so many people, for so many diverse um, cultures and localities. So uh, I, uh, you know, I spent uh, five years at Bodhinyana before before shuffling off to this wonderful island and uh, and getting trapped here because of the the, the COVID shutdown last year. Uh, I was in fact on my way back that very week when, when everything shut down in March. So I was really, really grateful. Um, I was very, ha very happy to stay here. Um, wasn't quite intending it to be this way. I was intending to go back and sort out the stuff and then and come back a bit later on, but here I am. So it's worked out really well. Um, getting on to a year and a half. Um, you know, COVID situation here is not good. It's, uh, it's everywhere, except not much in this corner of the world, which is great. Um, but it is a, a real serious uh, concern from what I see. Um, you know, the deaths in India, the variants that are coming out, these are really concerning. And, and, and more than concerning, they're, they're affecting people a lot. Um, emotionally, psychologically, physically, just, you know, people aren't coping with the loss of loved ones so rapidly or multiple loved ones and I understand that and uh, my heart really goes out to um, to these people to these individuals to these communities that, that are really struggling and I just would, would, would like to express my, my um, intention of sharing my merit and my metta with all of those people that are suffering in such a way and not just with COVID, with other things as well, displacement and climate change and so many things that are affecting so many people on this planet. So um, we can utilise this time to share and to spread and to dedicate our, our own intentions, our own feelings on, on these matters and also on our uh, respect, appreciation and gratitude to our teachers to Ajahn Brahm and Ajahn Brahmali and all the others that we utilize, um, like a, yeah, you, that we utilize for, for the assistance of our spiritual growth and uh, not, le not least 
of course, um, but uh, to pay homage to the Lord Buddha and for his um, ability to to, to um, attain the final goal, to establish a teaching method that is understandable and practical and can be utilized by anyone, whether you're, 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 you're a Buddhist or not, can be utilized by anyone. And some of these simple principles like the divine abodes are wonderful, you know, that of loving kindness and compassion and uh, sympathetic joy, the joy in others' benefit and uh, equanimity. These, uh, just that alone would be a wonderful place to start. So um, we're here to pay homage to uh, Lord Arjan Brahm and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, share with him our, uh, our dedication uh, of our merit and our accumulated merit from this uh, session from this coming together over the various days um, to, to practice metta bhavana to a point where, where you know, hopefully we can all get something out of it. Just a bit of calmness, a bit of clarity, a bit of peacefulness in our mind. If we can get just a little bit of that, feel a little bit of that stuff, then we're there. We're on the way, you know. We're 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 on the way to establishing this stuff, um, in a in a larger sense, and, and to attaining the final goal. But it takes a little bit of work, and some dedication, and some commitment, and um, and uh, but it can be done, I believe. So we're going to a bit later on. Um, do a meta meditation. This is just an introduction, uh, a few words on how to uh, share uh, and uh, and offer our dedications and our of our merit and of our goodwill and uh, our accumulated uh, uh, merit that uh, we may share with our teachers and those that have helped us to uh, to get to where we are so far. And, and to, to get a bit more perspective of, of what this is all about, this path, and uh, you know, a different perspective on, on one's practice. So I hope it's uh, been enjoyable, or tolerable, or, or uh, visually nice. Of, uh, you know, we're not short of, um, of panorama around here, but to find one that's not hot, and and that has a beautiful background so up there on that amazing rock formation is a little dome well it's a big dome but it's a, a stupa in the in the likeness of the stupa in Sanath in uh, the deer park and i believe it's the only one of its kind outside of the deer park so that's quite phenomenal and it says something about this region i would imagine and uh, a beautiful location to to um, practice uh, the path, and it's a beautiful location to be able to share it with all of you uh, on this um, momentous and very awesome occasion of Ajahn Brahm's 70th big birthday bash. Um, I hope everyone stays safe. I hope everyone stays well and peaceful. And, uh, and I hope you get the support that is needed uh, in these times, spiritually, emotionally, or, or physically. And, uh, and may you all be well and happy. And, and I'll see you soon for a meta guided meditation. Okay. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Welcome everybody uh, this morning to another Meta session uh, in 
contribution to Ajahn Brahm's 70th birthday. I'm up here on uh, top of a rock near Makuti, welcoming the dawn, a brand new day with brand new possibilities. And uh, so I'd like to just uh, quickly introduce the meta meditation, and that is to say, in general, that this meditation is uh, is a wonderful opportunity to to kind of reset the mind state, to uh, allow one to change uh, one's perspective on things to enable them to see things a little more clearly. And importantly, it allows one to start reconditioning the old habit patterns of, of uh, negative thought patterns, uh, whether it's frustration, or anger, or ill will, or impatience resentment or any of these uh, defiling nature uh, mind states that really hinder us uh, in life and certainly hinder us on the on the path on the noble eightfold path so the metta meditation was uh, a very good way to utilize um, as an antidote to all those things so this morning we will uh, do such a thing we will apply the antidote will apply the balm to the wounds and it's quite a remarkable how um, how one can benefit from such a thing and and in doing so uh, I would also like to pay my respects to Ajahn Brahm our teacher our my preceptor uh, and our, our support and guide for this path a path that he, he eloquently chooses to to utilize kindfulness as its main uh, as its main its main tool. So, with respect to Ajahn Brahm, I would like to dedicate this session, the merit accrued and gained from this session. And maybe we'd all like to do such a thing, is to uh, offer it to Ajahn Brahm in, in service and in uh, payment, if you like, of his wonderful support and teachings, dedication to uh, showing people the way. So, if we'd just like to get comfortable, if we're not already comfortable, Firstly, we will just, if you like, uh, cultivate an intention of what this meditation is about, what I've just mentioned, and also that more more of an understanding that uh, we're cultivating metta meditation, cultivating the heart space, cultivating it with kindness and love and joy and compassion. And those qualities that make us feel good and enable us to do kind things and generous things to others and to ourselves. So with that intention, let's just get ourselves comfortable. And we'll do it, we'll start with a quick body scan. Starting at the top of the head, right up at the crown. the skull, just observing any sensations we may feel, getting comfortable down the face, relaxing all the face muscles, the eyes, the mouth, the jaw, relaxing the jaw, letting that tension go, you can give it all a wiggle if you like, just give it a little shake, gentle shake, not a big vigorous shake, but just gently 
moving it. You can screw up your eyes a little bit, your mouth, and just relax it all. And flowing down the neck, I like to gently extend my head and my vertebrae, giving it a gentle wiggle. The shoulders, just relax it. You can lift them up, give them a little bit of a wriggle if you like, a bit of a roll, and relax. Down the arms, to the elbows, to the forearms, to the wrists, to the hands, getting them comfortable in your lap or on your thighs or wherever they are. Now down the back, starting from the shoulders down, just gently wriggling and letting it drop and fall away. If there's any um, tight sensations or, or painful sensations, just relaxing into that. Don't give it too much attention. Get comfortable if you can. Otherwise, just relax into it and just allow it to fall away and then carry on down the back to the lower back and the torso, the chest. Feeling the rib cage down to the stomach, to the waist, to the hips and buttocks and the pelvic region, very important region. Getting that area nice and relaxed, allowing it to just fall away, soften up and relax. The thighs and the big huge leg muscles, just relaxing those leg muscles and tendons down to the knees, another very important area. And if people feel um, pain, pain in this area, so make sure they're nice and comfortable. Opening your legs up if you need to. Sitting in a chair obviously is, is good if you have problems with back and knee. Otherwise, just observing, being aware of whatever you may feel if it's if it if it's not too too uh, difficult or not too painful. And relaxing and letting it fall away down to the calves and shins, to the ankles, to the feet, and all a little wriggle if you like. Just a little wriggle, a little bit of a twist to the ankles, a little bit of a pivot, and relaxing them, and then fall away. Now I'd just like to invite you to take some deep breaths, a very nice way to get familiar with the breath and in turn familiar with the body sensations as the breath is coming in nice and deep. Observing the body and the breath. Holding it for a moment. Experiencing that fullness of breath of the chest. You may feel it throughout the whole body. And then ex exhaling out gently, letting it flow out of the body, letting the body Retract again. And then another big deep breath. Getting familiar with the breath. Being aware of the sensations in the body. Expansion of the chest and possibly through the body. Holding for a moment and exhaling gently. Another deep breath. for a moment, and gently exhaling, and just stay with the breath for a moment. Coming familiar with the breath. Whether it's a long breath or short breaths, 
quick and rapid or gentle and slow deep or shallow whatever you may be experiencing just be aware of those breaths one at a time the present breath like to invite you to become aware of the body again. You may already be feeling sensations relating to the breath. And just become aware of the heart in particular. That vital organ of our body that works tirelessly it seems although sometimes I do get tired and create problems and so therefore perhaps we may just like to take into account a bit of the service the heart does for us in a biological sense the pumping of the blood the function of transporting oxygen rich nutrient rich mineral rich blood throughout the body throughout all the organs throughout all the limbs to the extremities into all the creases and the crevices and the long bits and the short bits the head right to the top to the eyeballs just being aware of that function. You may visualize it if you like, the blood being transported around. Or you may just really be aware of it happening. In any case, just observe that. If you find it a bit difficult, maybe you would like to just put your hand on your chest, in your heart, feeling the beating of the heart in the chest, being aware of that blood pumping with every beat of the heart, the valves opening and closing, the blood circulating throughout the body, throughout the organs, sustaining us and giving us life, health and comfort. And just as a little acknowledgement to our heart, maybe we'd just like to show our appreciation in a sense that we very rarely do with a thank you. Thank you, heart, for the work you do. I see you. I know you. I love you. I love you, heart. Just being aware of any sensations that may arise from that acknowledgement. Being comfortable with it, being at ease with it, and as we do that, we can shift our attention to the emotional side of our heart, that side that governs much of what we do day to day, through our happiness, through our sadness, through our anger and frustrations, through our joys and elations, through our rapture, 
through our rapture. Being aware of those emotions, particularly, most importantly, kindness and love, generosity and tenderness, those aspects that we may show to a very, very small child, perhaps a newborn, if you've experienced that, perhaps a grandchild, perhaps a little brother or sister. If we can just re-establish those experiences for a while. Maybe you find it easier with animals, a little puppy dog or, or your favourite pet, your pet dog who's unconditionally loyal and loving and that just makes you smile every time you see that pet stretch or sit or do its little thing. Could be a wild animal. Could be an injured wild animal, maybe one that you have cared for in the past or you've seen cared for, have you seen perhaps we can just take into account caring for a wild animal. Nursing it back to how tending the wounds, lovingly, kindfully. So with those warm, tender feelings, those emotions, allowing that to cultivate in the heart, allowing it to expand and build it within the heart. The lovingness, the kindness, the joyful, compassionate tenderness that we show to others, to puppies, to ourselves, just allowing it to grow. the warmth of the chest, the warmth of the glow of the loving kindness. Become aware of that radiating out throughout the body, filling the body, filling the chest cavity, the torso, all the organs. If you have any ailments, you may find it useful to allow that glow to linger just a little bit longer with kindness and love and warmth. Allowing that glow to radiate out throughout the body, throughout the limbs, the shoulders, the elbows, throughout the arms, to the wrists and hands, down the legs, from the hips, thighs, knees. Experiencing that glow throughout the body and down to the feet up through the neck and head and that glow to fill every aspect and every portion and every tiny little atom of our being and we may be aware of the glow coming outside of our body and if you if you wish, you may visualize this or just being aware. Visualizing it coming outside the body, a glow, like an orb, like a halo enveloping the whole body. And from here, we may like to just let it radiate out further. 
throughout the surroundings that you're in, whether it's a room or in the open, in nature, wherever it is, just allow it to radiate out further into neighboring rooms and neighboring surrounding areas. Being aware that this light, that this love, that this golden orb of metta and karuna has an effect on everyone and everything, be it crawling thing, be it flying thing, being, being an inanimate object, everything can be affected by this loving kindness, this warmth that we feel radiating out further and further into neighboring rooms, into the neighborhood, into the suburb, throughout your town or village or city leaving nothing untouched into the stormwater drains or the creeks and streams, rivers throughout the sky and trees and gardens and houses throughout the office buildings throughout the government buildings they all need love, loving kindness as well allowing our loving kindness just to, just to brush past them all and continuing out and continuing out throughout the surrounding districts and area, throughout the countryside, maybe the oak beach, maybe the ocean, throughout the mountains and the hills, allowing it to radiate out further and further, that glowing golden orb filling up the whole area as if the sun is just rising filling up the darkened winter valley, allowing the sun to illuminate all areas of that valley, of our valley, further and further and further into neighboring towns and cities, neighboring states and regions, into all the natural wild places filled full of animals and creatures, also into other realms, into other possibilities of beings that are seen and unseen, allowing it to radiate out further into the oceans, into the seas, into islands, and into neighboring countries, till you can experience it enveloping the earth that wonderful glow orbiting around our sun, suspended throughout the vastness and darkness of space with a backdrop of stars glistening and reminding us of how we are a part of this whole system. And just allowing that golden orb to envelop fully the earth, all its inhabitants, seen, unseen, known and unknown, liked and not so much liked. Allowing that warmth and loving kindness to infiltrate, to penetrate, to brush past and envelop all that we experience and out into the skies, now further, further out into space and into, the, uh, into our moon, Grandfather Moon, orbiting our planet. illuminating our darkened nights, affecting our tides, 
and our animals and our plants, sharing our loving kindness with Grandfather Moo. Continuing on into the planets throughout our whole galaxy and through our whole solar system and throughout our whole universe, continuing on, just spreading like a blanket of warm light, loving kindness, tenderness and compassion, allowing it to continue on further and further into neighbouring universes and neighbouring universes of those neighbouring universes infinitely on and on and on like a warm summer tide rushing up the beach spreading out throughout space Sit with that with a moment. You may like to breathe into it. You may be aware of the sensations through the body. Don't put much thought into it. No need to analyze. Just be aware of what we're feeling and experiencing. Sitting with that openness an expanse of loving kindness. And now, you may like to just bring it all back. Bring it all back, bring it all back. Being aware of everything we experience on the way out the universes, the solar system, the galaxy, the planets, our sun, our moon, our planet, that beautiful blue back in the vastness of space, coming back, coming back over the earth, coming back through the countries and through the oceans, coming back to your locality, your region, wherever you are, coming back, bringing that loving kindness back, knowing that all has been affected, all has been influenced by your very own loving kindness, your tenderness and compassion, your generosity and warmth, coming back to the heart, coming back to the heart, feeling the, the body, feeling the warmth of the body and the glow of the heart. Becoming present with the body. Being aware of any sensations that you may be experiencing. Allowing thought patterns to fall away. And just becoming familiar with the experience of the body. The warmth of the tingling, the glowing the vibration, whatever you may feel, the pressure of the buttocks, of the feet, of your legs, if there's any tension allow that to fall away, if there's no tension and one is relaxed, great. Now just breathe into that, if you wish.
Begin to it again. And we may just use the next couple of moments. to reflect on what we've just experienced for the last half hour, the last 30 minutes of our life, the start of a new day, a new beginning, just reflecting on what has arisen, what you've experienced, what was the same? What has been different? Did we hang on? Did we let go? Now if you would just like to imagine a gentle bell ringing three times And once the third ring has run, you may gently open your eyes, gently open your eyes and experience the new sunrise in Kudamigala Forest Monastery. The lagoon, full of animals, elephants and buffalo, and crocodile and fish, and the ocean beyond that, and all the jungle in between. So this is Kudumbigula, and a brand new day. So welcome back everybody. I hope that was okay. I hope that uh, one can feel a bit more at ease with oneself and with others. With the wild animals, with the creepy crawlies, with other people. And if not, then just come back to this experience or another experience of metta that you have utilized. So again, I would just like to dedicate this wonderful meditation session of Metta Bhavana to Ajahn Brahm and all his services that he has done for all of us, all his teachings and his jokes <laughs> and his uh, presentness, his ability to be there for everyone when he can, his tireless service. It is with great gratitude, Arjun Brahm, that I send this message of loving kindness to you and to all our teachers that have uh, supported and guided me on the path. So from Sri Lanka, Pedawan Saranai, may the Triple Gem bless you all. Thank you for joining in. And may you have a wonderful, wonderful day.